things I've noticed is the people like Michael Barrett, um, Larry, uh, um, what's his name, Larry Brock. Um, all of these people have kind of been let off the leash. They're allowed to go after Trudeau and each one's got their own unique way of underlining their points. So Michael Barrett was underlining committees where liberals were shutting down investigations into these this kind of criminality and waste and and larry brock's going the criminal angle right and so they're embarrassing the liberals they're trying to go after and rattle trudeau himself and the ministers the the shadow ministers are are being utilized in a way that is outside of the norm from previous conservative parties and it's good it's refreshing to see because at least they've got some fight in them holy smoke um Emergency bill for carbon tax relief. Polyev says he's on board. He's willing to pass this thing quickly with a unanimous consent bill in the House of Commons. Honestly, this is what leadership from the front looks like. He's, Polyev, his stated goal is to get rid of this tax. And so just like Barrett going after Trudeau in one one vector and Brock going after Trudeau in another vector, Polyev's going after him in another vector. And this vector is affordability. This vector is, I can fix this problem if you'll just let me, right? And he's saying, I can do it today. We could do this. We could fix this affordability issue right now, today. And that plays well. People are going to like that. Polyev is utilizing, is wielding this conservative party in a way that is making things hard for Justin Trudeau. And that's a departure from things we've seen in the last little while with the conservative party. So that's interesting to see as well. And so there's a lot to get to. Let's get to it. And first, we're going to start with the, the carbon tax thing, because that's that's where we're starting. Polyev says, Justin, you must treat all Canadians equally. You've paused the carbon tax on oil heating until after the election. Now do natural gas, propane, and other heating. Common sense conservatives offer unanimous consent to pass the law axing your your all your heating taxes tomorrow. Deal? So, and that's today. And one of the things, it's, it's very good because what happens is now this becomes an election issue and Polyev can make a very, very stark contrast and say, I will make this permanent. I will keep this tax off. I fought for the you know the country to have this removed. And when I'm prime minister, I'll make sure it stays off forever type deal. And so, and, and the alternative, of course, is Justin Trudeau. If you elect him, he will put taxes back on your heating and make it unaffordable again, like it is in 2023 right now, right? And so that's a very, very good, clean setup for a winning electoral I don't know, argument, period. And that's just one of them. So, and, and again, there's multiple vectors right now, painting Trudeau as incompetent, painting Trudeau as out of touch, painting Trudeau, and he is. He, they're not incorrectly painting him that way. I'm just saying, they're attacking him and he's getting, and the point is to rattle him. Is he getting rattled? Not yet, but he, the, the polls are rattling him massively, massively. So, uh, Gray Vidal, he's an MP and he says... Uh, oh, it's Gary. Ha, sorry, there was a there was a smudge on my screen on my screen. Um, husband, father, grand uh, grandfather, and he's the MP for Descent, uh, Mississippi, Churchill River, and Shadow Minister for Indigenous Services in Canada. And he says conservatives are offering our full cooperation to pass an emergency bill Monday to axe the carbon tax on all forms of heat before winter heat bill hits Canadians next month. And so good positioning, good timing. It seems like a common sense solution to an affordability problem that the government has the power and control over and that Justin Trudeau just has no will to act on. And so Polyev is offering it up. Let's do this. Get out of my way so we can do this, says Polyev, right? And so positioning himself as a leader, regardless of the position he holds in, in the House of Commons, it's it's a strategy and it seems to, I think it's going to play well. CBC News is reporting oil and gas giants are facing political pressure on Parliament Hill from MPs calling for a tax on excess profits. What are excess profits exactly? <laughs> excess profits, eh? How does one, how does a company make excess profits? Can an individual make excess profits? Just increase that tax to 60%, 70%, 80% of the money that you make? Why, why does the government get so much of the money that you make? Why do you get what you put in, out, do you think? I used to think so. The older I get, the less I think so. Here is 
this person is the person who is talking about how you should vote more liberals in if you want to be heard in government. And Senator Housakis is responding to this. He says, this is actually quite despicable. She's saying that her government only takes care of those who vote for them. That's not the way it's supposed to work. So no, the answer isn't to vote for more liberals. It's to vote for fewer. Justin Trudeau is not worth the cost. Branding, hashtag acts the task tax branding, right? That's all branding. Here is her name. And she was the one, she was in a video I showed yesterday. And I said that I didn't know who it was, but I think it was quite obviously her. I just didn't look very closely. Um, but her name is Guide. And she says, um, in response to Vassi, multiple times, I'll show you one, just because it happened so close to the beginning. But Vassi Kapolis rephrases her question in order to make sure she understands that the, this minister saying, you know, in order to get your needs met, vote more liberal. And she's like, are, are you sure? I don't think that you mean that. Anyway, here we go. Just to pick up on that point and the possibility of further uh, amendments to this policy based on issues around affordability. I know that, that both the premier of Alberta and the leader of the opposition in that province uh, posted statements following the decision around home heating oil. Uh, premier Smith said the federal government has decided that one part of Canada with one type of home heating is worthy of a carbon tax break, while those living elsewhere using another type of home heating do not. Is your government open to, uh, because of the affordability crisis right across this country, looking at other carve outs for other types of home heating in the future? That's a discussion that we'll have down the road when we know that this one is working. But I can tell you, Atlantic Caucus was vocal with what they've heard from their constituents. And uh, perhaps they need to elect more liberals on the prairies so that we can have that conversation as well. With respect, Minister, does that mean because there aren't liberals in the prairies right now that re are represented around the caucus or around the cabinet table, that the people of Alberta will have to live a more unaffordable life than the people in Atlantic Canada? Does that seem fair? Fashy, they're going to have the same options. They're going to get the, the... No, it doesn't seem fair. <laughs> Absolutely not. And fundamentally, that's the crux of the argument. And the liberals are going to lose. So, well, they're losing the public. They're losing in the, in the eye of the public, right? Even if they have a good justification, people aren't really interested in hearing about it. Michael Cooper is talking. This is a grab bag of governance here. Michael Cooper is talking about... Uh, this, John Brassard is tweeting this out. Read my statement on ethics committee investigations into the billion dollar green fund. And the liberal government is uncooperative with the police investigation into the billion dollar green fund. This is not surprising, right? But Michael Cooper is responding to this. And he says the liberal government is not cooperating and is withholding documents from committee investigations into the billion dollar green slush fund. At least $38 million in payments have been flagged as suspicious. Who is getting rich? in this latest liberal spending scandal. I mean, there's a lot of really concerning. I remember when I started doing this and I started hearing about the literally hockey bags of cash to purchase houses in BC, laundering money, hockey bags of cash being carried in and out of casinos, laundering money. And, and then it started to spread. It was called the Vancouver method. And it was drugs being bought, brought in, made in China drugs, brought in, sold, the money needed to be moved around, laundered, assets purchased, and so on and so forth. And, and the money got so big, senators were involved, all sorts of government officials, bureau, bureaucrats. Every time anybody got even close, this is like 2018, 2019, anytime anybody got close with racketeering, I mean, we don't have racketeering in Canada, but um, organized crime, fin track, uh, money laundering, any kind, any kind of crimes like that, any kind of organized crimes like that, the case fell apart last minute. Like, the news would be saying, this is a big case, big case coming, big case coming. And then all of a sudden, boom, case is blown up. Sorry, everybody, go home. Nothing to see here. Forget about it. You didn't see anything. People would go up to senators and interview them and say, hi, Senator, do you know anything about the you know hockey bags full of cash that show up, you know, that you're related to in your writings with regards to this, this, and this scandal? And the senator would just walk away, right? And it's those kind of things indicate that there's a big, big, big problem and nobody's interested. So the $38 million here is kind of small potatoes. You know, if you're playing in the $38 million pool, you're missing out the big, the much bigger pool in Vancouver, right? And the much bigger pool in Vancouver went Canada wide. So this is kind of small potatoes, but still somebody's getting rich. It's not small potatoes in 
like I don't think it's it's not something that we should pay attention to. But there are a whole bunch of different ways to make money in Canada these days. If if you're not in, if you're not worried about getting caught, and if you're not worried about being um, above board, and if you're willing to take the government for a ride, you know what I'm saying. And it's interesting because the arrive cans the arrive cam app scam, which we're <laughs> trying to say that ten times fast, arrive cam app scam, whew, um, which we're going to get to in just a minute, is is full of examples of contractors who know that the government has an absolutely endless pocketbook, like a deep pocketbook that has so much money that they're, he laughs at the end of the clip I'm about to show you about how much money they're charging for mobile apps. He's like, don't worry about the budget, buddy. Like, seriously, we got the budget. Michael Barrett is saying, leaked audio, Government of Canada strategists received $11 million on the ArriveCam app, ArriveCan app. <laughs> but did no actual work. Leaked audio reveals GC strategists boasting that they have the ear of the CBSA president. The RCMP is now investigating the $54 million arrive can app. Sorry, that was too fast. So it's it's on a phone. It's a little it's a little punchy. Like the audio is a little bit hard to hear. You can read it on the screen if you're reading it, but if you're listening, it might take a listen or two. Um, but what he's say, what he's saying with at the beginning, what he's saying at the beginning here is that they've got the ear of the ministers, the deputy ministers, and he names them. He's talking about the Canadian Border Services Agency. The the um, text on the screen adds color, meaning it adds the names of the defendants and gives context in a way that the audio itself doesn't give. But I'm not going to read that out. I'll, I'll just talk about it after. It's two minutes. The end part is worth is worth just as much as the beginning part. There's a little bit of middling, like it gets a little it gets a little bit dull maybe in the middle, but it's it, I think it's still worth listening to the whole thing. Here is excerpts from a November eighth, twenty nineteen, um, managing partner at GCS GC Strategies, and this is their internal things, and this is put out by Bolter. Bolt, Botler? Botler. I'm getting it terribly wrong. Sorry about that. Uh, declassified by Botler, Exhibit 1, the ear of the Deputy Minister of Public Safety. Excerpts from a call with Botler, ghost contractor, arrive can contractor. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so so we're, we're dealing with the with CBSA, the Canada Border Services Agency. What we can share right now is that, um, you know, we're getting very close to almost being very similar to the RCMP once recently. Sexual harassment. Situation, right? So we have um, essentially the ear of the, of the president right now of CBSA, which is, I guess, would be the equivalent of the minister or like the deputy minister. Mm -hmm. um, and, and my client, who is who's leading, um, he, he's a very high executive responsible for innovation cloud. Mm -hmm. So he, he said, he said that the, you know, this is a guaranteed win for, for the organization and for any any vendor or person who's going to be involved in it because it's I mean they, everybody just doesn't want to be RCMP right they really although they know it's happening and they have cases they can speak to they just really want to do what they can to look at, to give the optics that they're doing everything they can to prevent it as well mm -hmm. so they, they, they know they're not going to ever save a hundred percent of everybody so what's the, what do you need from me like from a next step of getting the proposal over to the president, mm -hmm. because this will land on his desk 100%. Like this is going you know, above the ADM level. This is uncharted territory for the government of Canada with, with, with these innovative solutions. So really, I, I don't think, especially when you're dealing with a topic so important, mm -hmm. I don't think there really is much of a budget when you're talking about the government and the CSA, right? So, I mean, just to, just to give you an idea, we're building mobile apps for these guys for $2 million right now. Ha ha, you know what I mean? $2 million for a mobile app. Ha, wait, right? You feel me? So the budget's not going to be a problem, they say. And it's, yeah, very, very concerning. Um, I'm glad the police are investigating this. I'm sad that, is it the RCMP investigating this? Well, then I guess I'm sad that the RCMP are investigating this. Can we get like Andy Lee? It would be an interesting Canadian like drama to, to follow Andy Lee doing an investigation, right? <laughs> there you go. That's a TV show. There you go. YouTube channel or whatever. TV shows don't really happen anymore. I was trying to watch the Loki one, the new, the second season of Loki. It's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. It's so terrible. 
I don't know that we're going to make it through the rest of it. It's probably, there was three episodes and I think that I'm done. I don't think I'm going to watch anymore. <laughs> Boring. Okay. True North says the new general counsel at the Public Prosecution Service of Canada says that she will promote diversity, equity, and inclusion, DEI, by addressing overrepresentation of Black and Indigenous people in the criminal justice system. Right. So that's going to totally ignore all of the criminality and all of the scandals and all of the rest of it. Now, I don't know if this is the general counsel's kind of if that's what they would be dealing with. But it seems like this is just one snippet of a larger problem within our court system where the court is more interested in in having DEI or DIE uh, policies in place instead of actually doing rule of law. Rule of law is everybody has the law applied the same regardless of the, who they are, state and life, um, ra race, height, gender, sex, whatever, um, all the rest of it. All, all of that is immaterial. It's you are blah. You stand accused of blah. Did you do it? You did it. Okay. Then you have this punishment and so on and so forth. So rule of law is being watered down to the point of uselessness with all of these, all of these new DEI inclusion um, initiatives. And that's the point. They don't want the rule of law to work properly because they want to use laws. They want to use made up bullshit laws to throw people in jail who make it difficult for them to run the program they want to run. And anybody who makes it easy for them to run the program they want to run, anybody who's radically on their side and who will beat up anybody who, who mis misgenders them or something like that, gives them a weird look, then those people will be allowed to operate and, and no rules will be applied to them, right? Like it's it's pretty insidious what's going on. And nobody nobody at the high levels seems really to question it except to see that it's going on and think, well, I guess there's nothing we can do about that. It seems strange, right? Here's Larry Brock. And he says, must read the RCMP probe of Trudeau does not pass the smell test. Former RCMP superintendent says the lackluster investigation does not add up. Trudeau withheld documents from the RCMP. The R RCMP never asked to interview Justin Trudeau. Hmm. Having never, this is a quote on the meme here, and this is Larry Brock's quote, or no, Larry Camus quote from the Toronto Sun. And he says, having spent nearly four decades as an RCMP investigator, this does not pass any smell test. Nobody in this country is above the law, including Justin Trudeau. Shame on the RCMP for this major blunder in not pursuing this investigation. No wonder so many Canadians feel that the RCMP have become far too close to the Trudeau government. Ironically, the RCMP are going to call out the CSIS members who outed China's interference in the past two federal elections, which caused huge embarrassment to Justin Trudeau. So yeah, they're, they're going after the leakers and saying this is a big, big, big problem. And they're not doing anything about Justin Trudeau and his law lawlessness lawlessness it's it's incredible it's it's something to behold here's a funny little thing when you're from guelph and i am so um, doug ford in the legislature is calling out mike schreiner my mpp and mike schreiner is talking about wanting to build houses but not getting on board with building houses or something like that i don't know there's some disagreement fundamentally i don't think building houses is going to be the solution to the housing problem because if if you are trying to affect supply and demand dealing, ignoring the demand side while trying to double the supply side when you've never historically been able to double the supply side seems insane. Like the, the hardest way to deal with fixing the problem in the, in the first place. It seems like the absolute cart before the horse, wrong way to deal with solving the problem. And that's how everybody's like, this is the best plan that we've got. All the big brains came up with this plan. And I think there's, there's no way. <laughs> you said, you can't remove immigration from the equation and go. Now come up with a solution to fix housing. And they were like, well, that, that's impossible. And they said, come up with a solution anyway, and we'll pretend it's not. Anyway, I, long diatribe, Doug Ford name checks Guelph and calls all of the city council lunatics. And he's 100% right. Here we go. He's listening to this. He's on record that he's going to vote for our infrastructure plan. Hey. He's going to vote for our housing plan. He's going to make sure he holds the mayor accountable. And by the way, I like your mayor. He just can't get up there and make a decision. So he always wants to pile it onto the province. And he's a good guy, actually. I like him. But your whole council and go off for a bunch of left-wing lunatics. Simple as that. 
Anyways, Mr. Speaker, I'm glad that you've agreed to vote for our infrastructure, our housing plan, Highway 7, Highway 413. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Speaker, they're all a bunch of left-wing lunatics. Moving on. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. They are. They're absolutely bonkers. It's so... I... Not that I can't explain it. It's that I can completely explain it. <laughs> Guelph is just like that, and I don't understand what happened. Something happened, because it used to be quite a reasonable place, and then it just went off into fantasy world, and we haven't come back since the mid-90s. <laughs> Hello everyone, thanks very much for watching. This is just a short version of a longer show. If you'd like to get the whole show, you can go over to canadapoly.com and sign up for a subscription. Just look in the drop down tab for shop and donate and look for subscriptions and you'll get immediate access to the full show. Love to see you. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful.